Kazanuk. Today, we're reading Hannah and the Ramadan Gift by Kasim Rashid. In this story, Hannah celebrates Ramadan by helping all those around her. How do you like to help others? Well, come on, join me in your jammies and grab your favorite cuddly friend because it's time for... Ramadan books, Ramadan books, Ramadan books in Nadia's nook. Welcome back to my nook, everyone. Are you guys all comfy in your jammies? Great, me too. Who's ready to read? Bismillah, let's begin. Hannah and the Ramadan Gift by Kasim Rashid. When her dada Jean gently shook her awake, Hannah and Noor opened her eyes slowly, confused by the darkness. The sun hadn't even risen yet. But when she saw her grandfather smiling down at her, she remembered. Ramadan Mubarak, shouted Hannah, jumping out of bed. Hannah had been counting down to the first day of Ramadan, the holy month of fasting for Muslims, and now it was finally here. Can I fast this year? Hannah asked. Going from dawn to sunset without eating for a whole month seemed hard to Hannah, but now that she was eight, she was surely old enough. How proud would her grandma, Daddy Jean, would have been of her today? Not yet, my dear, Dada Jean said. Fasting is for grown-ups, not for growing children. But if I can't fast, then how can I celebrate Ramadan? By saving the world, replied Dada Jean with a smile. Hurry up now. Let's join the others for Sefri before the sun comes up. When Hannah heard her Dada Jean's response and smelled the food of Sefri, the special breakfast of Ramadan, she forgot her disappointment. After Sefri in the morning prayer, it was time to get ready for school. Let's stop at the soup kitchen on the way to school, Dada Jean said. Why? Hannah asked. Don't we have plenty of soup at home? Dada Jean explained. The soup isn't for us. When we fast during Ramadan, we feel hungry, and it reminds us that all over the world there are people who don't have enough food, so we must help them. But the world has so many people! How can we help them all? Hannah asked. We can help our neighbors, Dada Jean replied, and that's worth the world. Later that day at school, Hannah played with her friend Maria. Ring! That's the bell. We should go back to class, said Hannah. Wait, cried Maria. I lost my grandma's necklace. What does it look like? It's gold with a green gemstone. Can you help me find it? Let's look in all the places we played today, Hannah said. But the necklace wasn't on the basketball court or the kickball field. I know. Let's look at the jungle gym, said Hannah finally. And there it was. It must have fallen off when I did that backflip. Thank you, Hannah. Hannah rushed into class after the bell stopped ringing. Next time, please make sure you're on time, said Mrs. Holmes sternly. But I was just... Hannah wanted to explain, but her teacher had already started reading again. Ramadan had just begun, and already Hannah had gone in trouble. Helping neighbors wasn't as easy as Dada Jean made it seem. On the eleventh day... Dada Jean woke Hannah early before sunrise. Shall we save the world again today, Dada Jean? Hannah asked excitedly. Then she remembered that today was an important day at school, the big science fair, and she did not want to be late. Don't worry, Dada Jean said. We're up in plenty of time to stop at the shelter before you go to school. Come, let's go. But... Dada Jean, 
the people at the shelter won't know that we're the ones who donated the clothes. Why does that matter, Hannah? asked Adajan. Sometimes it's enough to help people simply out of love. Besides, he whispered with a wink, all the best superheroes work in secret, don't they? When Hannah got to school, she got ready for the science fair. Amazing model, Hannah, her friend Danny said as Hannah arranged her model replica of Abbas Ibn Firnas' flying machine. Thanks, said Hannah. What's yours? It's a globe showing the dates and flight path for Amelia Earhart, the first woman to fly solo around the world. Ooh, look, Maria made a robot. Danny set his model down and ran off. Danny, wait! The globe was rolling off the table. Hannah lunged and caught it just before it smashed into the ground. That was close, Hannah thought. She put the globe back on the table before anyone noticed. Danny wins! Hannah was happy for Danny. He was a good friend and the globe was amazing but no one knew that Hannah had saved the day. How was the science fair, Hannah? Asked Dada Jean when he picked her up. Fine, said Hannah quietly. Why didn't she feel happy about doing the right thing? Dada Jean made it seem so easy. On Saturday, 20 days of Ramadan had passed. Remember, you have a play date with Sarah, called Hannah's mother. Sarah's family had just moved into their neighborhood. But I was going to work on my art project today, objected Hannah. And I don't even know Sarah. Hannah, that's not very nice. We need to welcome new neighbors like family. I'll make you a deal, Hannah, Dada Jean said. I'll go with you, and if you're not having fun, we can leave whenever you want, okay? I won't have fun, muttered Hannah, but she went with Dada Jean anyway. They ate delicious kanafa that Sara's mom had made. They looked at pictures of Sara's friends from her old school. Pretty soon, they had lost track of time altogether. Ready to go? asked Dada Jean. But we haven't finished our game! said Hannah and Sara at the same time. When they got home, Dada Jean showed Hannah an old family photo album. Hannah couldn't believe what she saw. This is from the year we moved to this place. We didn't know anyone. We didn't speak the language. So what did you do? asked Hannah. It was the kindness of our friends that got us through, said Dada Jean. And he said, twinkling at Hannah. It probably helped that your daddy Jean was happy to feed our neighbors the best butter chicken in the world. That evening, when Hannah thought about her Ramadan, she was sad. First, she got in trouble after helping Maria. Then, she did the right thing to help Danny, but she felt sad that no one knew. And she was ashamed about how she did not want to play with Sara at first. It was the last day of Ramadan. Sunset during Ramadan is called Iftar, said Hannah. That's right, said Dada Jean. At Iftar, we break our fast. And when the sun sets on the last day of Ramadan, it's the Ayid al Fitr celebration. Hannah exclaimed. Dada Jean smiled. Do you think you made the world a better place by helping your neighbors this Ramadan? I tried, Hannah responded, but I don't think it worked. I wouldn't be too sure about that, said Dada Jean. The sun was shining the next day. It was finally Ayid. Hannah and her family headed to the mosque for Ayid prayer. The mosque, like their home, was decorated with Ramadan lights and the air was filled with the wonderful aroma of her favorite Ayid desserts. After Ayid prayer, they visited the cemetery 
to remember Daddy Jean and other loved ones. They got home for the Aid party just as their guests started pouring in, exclaiming, Aid Mubarak! Hannah's whole world was there to celebrate Aid. Her cousins from out of town, her friends who attended the church across the street, her neighbors who attended a synagogue right by their mosque, the sick family who ran the soup kitchen at the local Gurdwara. Everyone was hugging her and saying, I eat Mubarak, Hannah! They ate delicious hir, gulab jamuns, and jalebis. They hugged and laughed. Race you to the last gulab jamun, said Dada Jean. But Hannah had something else on her mind. How do I really know if I've helped the world this Ramadan, Dada Jean? Well, let's see. Did you help your friends when they needed you? Hannah thought about Maria. Yes. Did you help others simply out of love? Hannah nodded as she thought about Danny's globe. And did you show love to those who had no one else? I think so, said Hannah as she thought about Sarah. Then you have your answer, said Dada Jean. It would still be many years before Hannah could fast for Ramadan, but she'd helped her neighbors, her world, and that made this the best Ayid ever. Wasn't that so great how Hannah helped all those people, even when they didn't know it was her helping them? I think so too. During Ramadan, it's even more important to help all those around us. Inshallah, I can't wait to see you all tomorrow night when we read another book in my nook. Until then, good night and sweet dreams.